live feed is started. Uh, Texport's working on getting Michael Minardi up here. He made it for our show, so I'm so tickled to have Michael Minardi on the show. They're coming up, so that's going to be awesome. And then tonight's topic, I'm going to talk about cannabis hypermeresis syndrome. Um, I'm not going to start that chat until 7. <coughs> Pardon me. I want to wait a half an hour, um, have some conversations with Michael, and allow some people to come into uh, the live feed before we take off on that topic. So, until my tech support gets here, anybody who comes on the show, please go and um, share this video out there. Share it out and invite people. I'd like to have a lot of conversation on this, and hopefully um, civilized conversation, because I see people get very upset about this topic, which it's really sad because um, just because it doesn't happen to you doesn't mean it doesn't happen to somebody else. And there's a lot of people that really personalize uh, their belief about cannabis hyperemesis syndrome due to, you know, their passion and love for this plant. Well, there's people that passionately love tomatoes too, and they absolutely croak if they were allergic to it. And so, you know, at 7 o'clock is when I'm going to tell a story about a client um, that I had right here in my lap. Um, first time I met him, they were constantly carrying around a vomit bag. And so that'll be the beginning of that tale. So I'm hoping that we can have some logical and rational discussion about it. I hope people can find some answers. Um, I'm in no way done finding any answers about this topic whatsoever. Um, the uh, there, there's so much research that needs to be done with cannabis period but with cannabis hypermeresis syndrome it affects so many different people at so many different levels and then with uh, the advent of concentrates I think it's becoming more prevalent because it's much higher concentrations of the medicine and I'm I'm a microdose girl um, I like to have my concentrates occasionally but in small amounts you know it's not a daily thing for me so um, and people that I do see it, that, that are doing high levels of concentrates, you know, there are people, they won't talk about it publicly, but a lot of times privately they'll say to me, oh my gosh, I'm having that problem. What, what's going on? And, and so that is uh, very, very, it's troubling to me that people are afraid to talk about it because there's so much stigma around it. And I don't think there should be stigma around it. I think we need to get to the bottom of what the problem is, figure out what it is, and help as many people as we can. And if we can do that by blocking some CB receptors or finding a way around the problem, we, we've really got to do that and encourage our doctors to look and our scientists. And the people who are suffering from the condition, I really hope that um, they'll, they'll reach out and talk about it so we can at least start documenting some of the stuff that happens with these folks, support them through it, and get them back to uh, tolerable levels and dosing of being able to utilize cannabis. Um, so that's some of the stuff I have going on there with that. Uh, my <laughs> tech support is coming back and hooray, they made it. Hey folks, we're live already. Um, Mike Minardi's walking in the room, so Mike, I got a chair for you right over here. Welcome to my wellness class. Hello, hello wellness. Really we don't have wellness. a lot of viewers yet, but we do have people that come in and look after, so okay. I'm leading up to it, and then when my tech support here goes and starts sharing, yeah, go ahead and be sure the page refreshed, and then this video will be on there, and you can share it to all of those groups and let them know we're out here. But at 7 o'clock, I'm going to start talking about cannabis hypermeresis syndrome. Oh, excellent. Yeah, because that one's a very hot topic for people. But one thing I'd, I'd love to have you here, um, of course, want to talk about Regulate Florida, something we're both very passionate about. Scooch in here. I will. Come a little closer. <laughs> and so um, I'm one of the founders of Regulate Florida, and Michael is the chairperson. Um, we're both very, very passionate about this plant and getting it access for everybody out there. So, uh, Michael, you want to give them a little heads up? Do your little Regulate Florida wrap. You do so well. We are. Regulate Florida is the only way that you can, number one, not have to get on a list if you want to be a patient here in Florida. You don't have to pay $75 to some stupid registry mm -hmm. every year and money to a doctor. And you can cultivate your own and use cannabis in any in all forms that you choose. Right. Um, no patient has to be left behind. You don't have to be on a specific list. 
in order to get it under Regulate Florida, and we can generate millions upon billions of dollars of tax revenue and revenue to the state of Florida. You know, we have um, the best petition in the state, I think, and uh, I the agree, country, but if not. <laughs> we wrote it, so we're kind of biased, but I really encourage people, please do read it. Um, one thing that was very critical to us when we did put this together was that we paid attention to what caused problems in other states with their legalization amendments and what happened with those, and we tried to do a lot of corrections. So one of the biggest things that I'm so very proud of is protecting gun rights. Can you tell us a little bit about that, Michael? Because yeah. that's a real hot topic these days and I, people need to know. It is, and there's a lawyer out of Orlando, I guess, who did a news clip last November that was totally like, if you are have guns, you face losing your, your, your life and your liberty and, you know, getting thrown in jail is an enhancement to it. Uh -huh. So, but, you know, realistically, under Regulate Florida, we make it clear that under the state of Florida, you know, it, it cannot affect your gun rights. We remove it from the statutes. Um, right. It wouldn't, unfortunately, interfere with federal law in regards to being able to purchase weapons. And mm -hmm. I want to make it clear that there is no laws right now that prevents people who have cannabis medical cards from holding and carrying guns right now or concealed weapons permits. Now, are you ready for this, though? I, got a sh I haven't got to tell Michael this yet, but mm -hmm. I actually got a text from somebody telling me that their physician told them that they could not have guns if they got a medical marijuana certification straight in their office right there, and the person got up and walked away. Um, physicians have been told a lot of things. Mm -hmm. I know the new class for physicians is scaring them to death. Uh -huh. that the Florida Medical Association is giving. So we just got to get it out of the hands and let people take wellness back into their hands because this should be our job to care for our, our, our bodies. We know how our bodies feel. We know how and what substances work in our bodies and when our body's feeling good when it's not. And, you know, there's so many different products that we have in this country. And cannabis is just one of the many natural products that we have. I think it's one of the best and it works with us and it, it should be in, in everybody's diet. And Regulate Florida does, you know, based on the plan count, would allow people to be able to juice as well. Let me grow again, so. please. Everybody <laughs> sign a petition. Heidi wants to grow. We, we all should, should grow something. Have a little <laughs> greens in our diet, right? Just I got to grow us. legally in Montana and it was so liberating. I mean, I absolutely loved it I'm not very good at it I'm not gonna I'm not a great grower but um, just growing and tending that plant was so incredible and ever since then I've always said the only thing addictive about cannabis is growing it it is you fall in love with those plants they're like your little babies mm -hmm. they were yeah. took them out on the front porch in the sun we had a, a a fire ring with stones around our hearth out in the front yard and so I'd take them out to the greenhouse and move them out to the front yard and move them around the fire pit and <laughs> wave at the neighbors when they went by. <laughs> it, was, it was great. You know it's a freedom that was taken from us that we have to take back and that's the only way we can do this. Right. And you know and that's our health as well because this has a huge impact on the pharmaceutical industry. You know I know a lot of the products that you work with and, and bring patients on to uh, it's a health and wellness issue. You know, I'm part of a new documentary that's going to be coming out, um, but the producer of it actually has an awesome story, and it's um, Cancer Has a Cure, I believe. It's, awesome. It's on Amazon. It's one of the number Wonderful. one downloaded videos, but the guy tells the story, and he told me he went to the doctor's office with his wife, and they told him basically, you know, we're going to cut out your, your liver so you don't have, you know, you have a bladder bags, you know, your urine and whatever. Feces out, we're going to cut out half your uterus. Oh, oh wow. Um, and wow. then we're going to give you chemo and radiation, you have 50% chance of living. He says, what, what about this treatment in Germany we can get, you know? And the doctor's like, you'll never live, don't do it, you can't do it, you got to get on this immediately. They left and, and took off to Germany. And, you know, it makes the hairs on my neck stand up, but within 30 days, uh -huh. um, she was cured. She Fantastic. has been cancer free for three years, basically through nutrition and diet and mm -hmm. natural medications. Yes. Um, and, and cannabis, ironically, was not one of them. That's what's amazing. And since I've gotten yeah. into the whole terpene healing and essential oils as well, 
I've learned so many different ways to fight can, can, cancer it's, it, and any d disease or condition. But the thing about it is, is it's all phytotherapy. It's all plant medicine that I'm dealing with. Wow. And I think that's what's happening with a lot of these people, too, is they're finding changing their diet to raw foods, um, non-alkaline, uh, you know, keeping a good pH to battle cancer. I actually have a young man. I did a lot of work in Colorado back in 2010 through 2012. Um, he came to me when he was 22. We had quite a few people throw us some Hail Marys. And my girlfriend, Char, and I had a house in the Springs. And we imported quite a few patients from out of state to come and heal themselves. And I, I was not there at the time, but I had met this young man. He lived here in Florida. And uh, we got him out there to the Springs, and he learned all about the medicine and how to make his own oil. Um, when he came to us, he was 22 and had a glioblastoma. Well, now he's 29, cancer-free, and a nutritionist who teaches people how to manage their diet and fight cancer with great success. Yeah. So, you know, there, it, it can happen out there. Um, people just really have to take control of their health care is the big problem because they may not... Um, you've got to be in charge and learn about what's going on with your body. So that, that's a big thing on what you've got to do with your own health care. And then also, when it comes to the legality of this plant, Michael, how many, Michael's a premier cannabis attorney here in Fort Lauderdale, why, in, in Florida, period. But in Broward County right here, was it two, three years ago now? That was 2015, yeah. Wow, three years ago. Um, he won the first ever medical necessity case by trial jury with Jesse Teplicki, who is a dear friend. Just love Jesse. How many of your clients are patients, Michael? Um, pretty much all of them. Uh -huh. So it's pretty much what I do now. And we'll, we have the first um, potential caregiver necessity defense coming up on the week of April 20th. So April 16th, a woman is um, going to be facing trial in Hillsborough County for you know making and growing plants to cultivate for use of her mom. Uh -huh. um, so that should be very interesting. That's going to be one of the first in the state. The last one that we had was Kathy Jordan's case, obviously, with Robert Jordan in the prosecutor's office right. in that case, you know, had compassion and understanding and, and dismissed the charges against him. Uh -huh. But this, this county is going forward with it. And, you know, I just came down from uh, Clay County. Uh -huh. A five hour Somewhere drive in the wherever rain. You are. <laughs> uh, and, you know, we have one of the first patients in the state who was arrested with um, possession of, you know, flour and mm -hmm. oil, um, not from one of the dispensaries. And so he's facing charges up there in Clay County. And one of their first questions is, What is an attorney from Tampa? doing here for a third degree felony case <laughs> well just because about he knows his stuff <laughs> just trying to educate you judge you know and so. so michael what would you have for some basic safety tips for clients out there you know in, in today's world not just in florida but across the country because as well, many of you may not know but michael's helped with cases across the country as well you know the the first thing is to be smart and secure you know intelligence and the best defense is a good offense mm -hmm. and that would mean drive smart and intelligently don't give anybody a reason or law enforcement a reason to pull you over right. to avoid that interaction altogether and I, I hear so many times and like I had a quarter pound in my car and I was going 80 down the road and I'm like <laughs> why were you speeding like <laughs> Is that just not a simple <laughs> fix, you know? Right. And um, unfortunately, you know, those things happen. Not using your blinker, just not being a, mm -hmm. you know, by the book driver. Don't give them a, an opportunity to pull you over. If you do get pulled over, be smart. You know, hopefully if you are carrying anything, that there's um, so many things now on the market that can help with um, smell proof issues mm -hmm. uh, that are out there that can prevent odor from getting into the car and the vehicle. Number two, you know, you can also let the windows down as you're pulling over. That creates a vacuum and should at least temporarily get all the odor out of the car um, to be able to prevent that. And then number three, you know, deny any consent to search. Um, no, you're right. Yeah, so many people, unfortunately, consent to search and agree uh, when they don't have to, and especially in vehicles or when multiple people are involved. So we have a right of constructive possession. Mm-hmm. Which basically means law enforcement has to prove who has dominion and control over it. So if something's in a console or under a seat or, you know, in a backpack in the back or something like that, it's very difficult for them to prove those charges unless someone makes an admission. 
extremely difficult. One of the most difficult cases that so they have, have more to than prove. one person in the car too. Yes. <laughs> you know, or I mean, no, no. have a pink backpack with someone's name on it that's not yours. I don't know who left that there. I gave somebody a ride. They're gone. You know, Do I look um, like I'd carry a pink backpack on this guy? Exactly. <laughs> you know, be smart about things, but best way is to not get pulled over or not have that interaction. And number two, unfortunately, if you do get busted, please don't snitch. Because you know what? That's how 90% of people get arrested is a snitch. Right. Someone wanting to give up because they don't want you know their life or freedom because they did something stupid. Mm -hmm. Just don't do it. It's not worth it. It's the only way that these law enforcement officers are winning when it comes to this war on drugs is snitches and people mad because you won't you know give them cannabis if you're growing or something right. like that. Right, and any of that, you that's know. just, well, come on. There's really very little I think you know what I see in my case is any legitimate like you know CSI or real police work right <laughs> yeah it's usually somebody else in, the, in our own industry rolling over on somebody else which yeah. is really sad if you think about it and yeah. you know that's one thing that <laughs> it just amazes me in all the years that I've been involved with this how many people think it should just flat out be free yeah. you know now if we had regulate Florida and we could all grow our own and it was a happy little uh, utopian world that might be possible right and but, under regulate florida you know you can give uh -huh. someone up to an ounce right you know i think it's so um, say michael and i were both show. gardening under the regulate florida amendment and i had a strain he really liked and he had one i really liked we'd go hey let me try you an ounce of that and we could trade an ounce back and forth yeah. without any problems taxes or trouble that's right and you know it, it's something that we need for freedom it, it influences and it affects so many other rights and, and wellness and natural wellness is another one and, and preventative medicine mm -hmm. you know and I think that's really what a lot of our wellness ideology and exercise and eating right and things really goes to mm -hmm. not necessarily treating disease and, and it can treat disease as well but, but preventing it from happening right exactly you know and I think really you know, if you look at it pre-1937, there's some people who believe in arguments that taking, you know, endocannabinoid type of substances, CBD and THC, out of our bodies and our systems has caused this um, really um, explosion of different illnesses and diseases and cancers mm -hmm. and autism and issues like that that we didn't have previously, at least weren't diagnosed previously. It's hard right. for us to say, obviously, because mm -hmm. um, people are dying much younger than too in many ways. So right. it's um, very difficult. But I do know I have um, a 19, I should have brought it, a book from the early 1900s. It was one of the only, uh, one of the first um, educational medical books, allegedly, in this country, right? Mm -hmm. It's not in great condition, but it's, Amazing because the things that they knew in 1909 oh, and 1910 stuff like that. are things that we are trying to recreate now. It's right. no GMOs, like, and it says that don't use genetically modified <laughs> foods. You know, it's eat amazing. organic. Eat, <laughs> and that know, was even local. before the hippies. <laughs> it was way before. It was the early 1900s, mm -hmm. and it was, and you know, and, and getting this, and it was cleaning out um, someone's house who was moving, and they're like, "I take it," and I saw it, and I'm like, "Wow, this is amazing." And just, I don't know, just the fact that they knew this, you know, in, in the early 1900s and were teaching it to people mm -hmm. and then just lost it. And it has the, the detrimental effects of alcohol and tobacco and heroin and opium at the time. And it doesn't say anything about cannabis, tell you that much. Oh, no, you because know, they it like used one word, it all the it. time. I'm yeah. a firm believer. Um, you know, people say that alcohol is probably what was used back in the Western days to do their amputations and stuff like that. And in all the Westerns, you see them stick a bottle of whiskey in their mouth. Well, I totally believe it was because of the brainwashing and the illegality of cannabis that we don't see. What I truly believe, myself personally, this is my opinion, but in my opinion and from my experience in dealing with cannabis resin, CBD resin, and different things in different states where I have been, I sincerely believe that they use cannabis resin to anesthetize people for surgeries. You can knock somebody out. We had a guy, and I can say his name because it was a public case, Bob Krause in Colorado Springs. Mm -hmm. It was because of Bob Krause that all of the public defenders in Colorado got educated because of his case. Now, old Bob. I love Bob. He's a dear friend, and I hope he watches this someday. I always, usually whenever I talk about Bob, he calls me within 24 hours because I make his ears burn. But <laughs> I love him. But um, 
he was fighting his leukemia and he wasn't getting the results that he wanted. And he was a long-term cannabis user and he was using one gram a day at that time. Well, he bumped it up to three grams a day. That man was drooling on the floor. We had to roll him around and pick him up and move him and stuff. But that right there is what convinced me they had to have used this. This is the medicine they used to anesthetize people because they could knock them down like that and they knew it wasn't going to kill them. And I'm going to repeat again because I will always repeat this every class. Cannabis has never, ever killed anybody in the entirety of humanity. And here's why. It's because your medulla oblongata, your brain center that controls your heartbeat and your respiration, doesn't have any CB receptors on it. So if it doesn't have any receptors there, it cannot uptake the cannabis to stop your heart or your breathing. So you can knock somebody down, have them passed out cold for a week, drooling on the floor. Well, you better hydrate them, but you're not going to kill them. Okay? So that's important that everybody knows that. I'll repeat it until people are just, okay, we've heard that. You can move on. <laughs> well, I think it makes sense as to why they find it in seemingly every ancient tomb or uh -huh. old dead person now. They have some sort of cannabis remnant or something on them. I think almost the last like three or four different discoveries have had uh -huh. some sort of cannabis material with them. <laughs> right. I think one of them had like a couple pounds. Didn't right? they find right. it in the tombs in Egypt too? Mm -hmm. It was like 4,000 years old and crystallized and some mummies casket it's well cured mm -hmm. <laughs> <laughs> the trichomes were still active though that was what was amazing as they were still active yeah. this is an amazing plant that's why mm -hmm. well and then the other thing that's just amazing to me that i talk a lot about too and I, I get to work with now is the cbd and you know two years ago people said cbd and i'm like eh, it's not as important we need thc blah 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 well, the more that I learn and the more that I learn, it's amazing to me to really see the benefits that are out there for people. And so for anybody who sees this in a non-medical state, this medication is within your reach. This wellness avenue is within your reach. Not in Kansas. There's two states, I think, Kansas specifically and... outlawed CBD. And that's... Please cover that for us, Michael. <laughs> and, and you definitely have to fight those laws in those states in order to, to change them because it's ridiculous. Mm -hmm. and, and even here in Florida... Um, right now, the Department of Health has attacked a company for selling CBD products, saying that they have to be a licensed MMTC. So they've sent. Be them interesting the to see how that goes, well, especially after Operation Candy Crush in Tennessee. <laughs> well, uh, yeah, and that's another different question that I'm, I'm going to be arguing in many cases now: the testing issues and stuff like that. I actually have a chemist, um, an FDLE chemist, set for a deposition on Friday. And I'm going to grill her on the, whether or not they can or cannot taste percentages at all, which my understanding is they can't. So that becomes an issue, right, with the hemp products and CBD products. Mm -hmm. If they test positive for THC, most law enforcement, including Homeland Security, I do have a case in St. Lucie, guy got busted for um, importing Slovenia hemp industrial tea. Stuff literally has hemp and spinach in it and, and one other, like, natural ingredient that's not cannabis obviously mm -hmm. and they tested positive under your field test and did a search warrant on his house and but you know the thing that's so crazy is remember last year mm -hmm. when I made my if you haven't seen it on my regular Heidi Hanford page and I'll try to share it in this link to the link to the video too um, last year uh, Whole Foods and they're getting ready to do it again had a baby hemp and kale salad and I mean, I'm in the store opening the box and the serrated leaves are jumping out. I took a video of it and sent it to the school mm -hmm. principal and said, coming soon to a lunchbox near you. <laughs> okay? So when, they, when, the, when the Department of Health wants to go after these people for utilizing a CBD product, what are they going to do with Whole Foods? And what are they going to do with the grocery stores here that sell it? Or Amazon. <laughs> Amazon, Walmart, Candy Crush in Tennessee. It's so funny. When, they, when the journalists were sitting there going, but it's legal. And then the cops are going, no, it's not. But it is. It's in Walmart. It is? Well, we're going to go after them, too. And they never did. <laughs> they had to drop all the charges. And it, it took, they had them shut down for a week. So now there may be law cases from the people oh, they're, who they're were shut down is, coming yeah. back. Yeah. Absolutely. And, you know, it's going to be interesting in this state as to what happens. There's CBD stores popping up everywhere. Um, mm -hmm. Law enforcement throughout this state all feel differently upon it um, yeah. and what their issue is. There's now CBD flour coming into the state and being sold everywhere. Really? Oh, oh yeah. There's a Ooh. couple different strains of CBD, or I'm sorry, hemp flour. 
Well, we'll use hemp because that should be the appropriate term. Right, hemp uh, flower. Hemp flower mm-hmm. coming into the state. Um, so it's That's very amazing. Interesting. Oh, yeah. I'm, uh, my, my brain immediately <laughs> went off, you know, terpene healer. What terps are in that? Um, Do so, we find the same profiles in the uh, well, hemp flower? Well, right now they had um, two strains, the place that I went to. One was cherry wine. So it absolutely, it, it, you know, had terpenes and it was full awesome. plant hemp. So, yeah. That's fantastic. We're, we're getting there. Whether or not it's legal is another story, but <laughs> our position is, and I do believe hemp in, in this issue is legal. Uh, mm-hmm. You know, my general position is, hey, listen, the government wants to, you know, call something a, an apple or an orange or a, a donkey or a horse, they can do so. And if they want to write legislation that does that, like they did with hemp, meaning that they created a definition, mm-hmm. you know, so the DEA and before that it's been cannabis, it's all one plant, right? But the DEA, uh, the legislators, you know, came and said, this is hemp, 0.3% or less THC, uh, Delta 9 THC mm-hmm. is hemp. And that's now the definition of something <laughs> called hemp. You can no longer call it cannabis. I mean, the legislature has a right to that's do that. That's awesome. I just, you know, I so love that's that. my position on it. Right, but as you talk about that, my brain just explodes from what I know about the lobbying and the laws and all of... Ever since I've been involved, I've always been trying to find a way to look this way, look that way. How can we undo what Anslinger did? Because no matter how much I don't like that guy, he was brilliant in his marketing and brainwashing and look at the... He still has effect today. So if we could be as good as he was, we could really undo this really good. We just got to find our people and get out there and everybody... You know, one thing that I see in this industry that happens a lot is people go and they just tear each other apart. Well, one thing Irvin and I talk about all the time, we all have to realize we all share the same love and passion for this plan. We're going to go at it a different way. That doesn't mean that he's wrong or I'm wrong or she's wrong or whatever. We all have our different opinions, views, values. That's even why I'm sitting here as terpene healer now and working on the terpene side of it and freaked out about CBD and so tickled and pleased with it. So, you know, opinions, attitudes, titles, everything changes. And that's why also um, when I close up with Michael here, are you going to hang out for a while? Or are you well, got a call? Got, we have a call at 720, so. Okay, and I go till 830. Time. Perfect. Mm-hmm. <laughs> Got to hit the 420 somewhere. <laughs> yeah, exactly. But um, I do want to start my story about the cannabis hyperemesis syndrome in the local case that I had. And so that's a long story to tell. So anybody that's watching right now, do we have any questions for Michael? Did anybody put any questions in their tech support? So, you know, I think, and in, in just so everyone knows, you know, we have a lot of awesome stuff going around for the holidays. Mm-hmm. Um and I didn't mention it, I will, and I'm sure she does, but, you know, regulateflorida.com, people can go and get involved and yeah, download the sign petition, up. sign mm-hmm. the petition. And if you're not in Florida and you're elsewhere, you know, you can get involved. Every state in this country has a normal, has a marijuana policy project, has a National Cannabis Industry Association, some organization that you can get involved with to kind of help push these issues in your state. Mm-hmm. You know, we've... Um, luckily, as you said, we've done work throughout the country with minority law, and that's including in Oklahoma and in Kansas, mm-hmm. where we've we've been able to free people or at least you know significantly reduce charges and the penalties on those people, you know, by fighting for this plan and educating people about the miraculous health benefits of it, mm-hmm. and that in combination with I know a lot of the DoTerra stuff right now and the things that you have, you know, are helping people and, you know, we can easily go back to a healthier society with this plant, not only, you know, in our own bodies, but for the environment as well with what Mm -hmm. it does and and hemp does to everything. So, you know. Well, and hopefully decrease anxiety because, you know, one thing I've noticed since I've been working in this industry and doing what I do with my patient navigation, I have cancer patients pop up and then I get a run of autism and then I get a run of seizures But one thing that stays steady, anxiety. Mm -hmm. I have a flock of anxiety people all the time. There's not just one. Uh, I have them in my family, people who deal with anxiety (laughs) on a daily basis. I think most people that are human who have jobs or kids have anxiety. (laughs) Right. Well, that could also be endocannabinoid deficiency. (laughs) If they don't have either one of those, they probably have anxiety about not having that. (laughs) Why don't I have anxiety? (laughs) (laughs) I got to find some way to have anxiety. No, they have anxiety about not having a family or not having a job. Right, right. We we live in an incredibly stressful life in this time that's Mm -hmm. driven 
driven by you know results in a lot of times driven by information and being attached to these things social media seven love it or hate it here we are right now on it right now you know and it'll go to another form on the youtube channel and all of that but love it or hate it it's here we we use it and it causes anxiety it brings us happiness it, it can go all sorts of ways so yeah but yeah there's a never-ending flock of anxious people but it always makes my day when i have somebody go oh my gosh that and one of the most amazing things i have to tell you besides cbd cbd is phenomenal but i do have to crow about this oil this melissa oil mm -hmm. melissa oil people be you have to try it before let me make something so you can try it before you spend the money because it's very, very expensive. But some of my upline have talked about um, using one drop sublingually um, to battle anxiety. And I'll tell you, I made a tincture for Irvin with that. He loves it, and it just, we calmed him down. He just loved it. And then my daughter just adores cheer. And so that's another thing where a lot of these things really help. Like... Um, with my autistic kids or, or even just people grieving or everyday emotions you know um, I have people who go to the holistic and they're, they're like okay I'm lethargic today so they're going to go and put on some orange oil or some citrus oil or something like that to motivate themselves and then when they want to take it down we do the lavender well that's all terpenes and I challenge each and every one of you go to the doTERRA website look up a single oil scroll down and look at the main chemical compound can even show Michael right here. Turn to a page. Pick a page. Well, I know that um, you know Dr. Sulak out of Maine mm -hmm. for a while was was feeling that for a lot of his seizure patients that the limonene um, was a beneficial mm -hmm. terpene for um, anti-seizure. And you know these are things oh, that are in to... every plant that we have samples. that you know cannabis also does. And so I'll just go like that. Flip. Poke a finger in. There you go. One. Cardamom. Cardamom is fantastic for belly issues. But look at these terpenes right here. Those aren't as um, as frequent as people would understand. But terpenyl, terpenyl acetate and then 1,8-cineol is in cardamom. And then we'll flip over and go look at... Let me find one and I'll just jump out at him. Right here, look at cilantro. Yep. Linalool. And then here's the amazing thing. I'm going to bring Irvin in probably next week and do a demonstration about beta caryophylline. You guys are going to be floored. you got to wait till next week for that. But look at this right here. Caryophylline in black pepper. Black pepper. Caryophylline, limonene, and sabonine. All of those are terpenes. And one of the best ways to go and check what... You know how they say what strain for what pain? Mm -hmm. No, it's not the strain. It's the terpene. It's the terpenes that make up the profile of the cannabis plant. So, say you have a strain that you've been using for a long time and you can't get it anymore because they quit making it or quit selling it or whatever happened wherever you are. And so, the best thing you can do is go online and look up the terpene profile for that strain. So, let's just say White Widow was your strain. You go and Google terpene profile White Widow cannabis strain and you'll get it all in there and you can go see that terpene profile. That's your magic right there, and that's going to tell you, look at the higher levels of that. Those are your terpenes that are going to be the most beneficial because you're getting the most of them in that strain. And so then when you go pick another strain, or if you want to finagle something with essential oils or phytotherapy, you look to those terpenes and cross over. And I've had great success in that with people who can't use cannabis, and, and that's where the cannabis hyperemesis syndrome comes in too because some of those people can't. But this is how we can get the terpene healing to them without affecting, which when I talk to cannabis, I, mm. when I start that story, it'll make sense. Mm -hmm. You know, um, yeah, and that's a very little known type of illness there or mm -hmm. a side effect. Well, it's the cross reference it, yeah. that people don't think about because a lot of people, um, they look at aromatherapy and they think, oh, it's just you're misting something into the water. No, certified pure therapeutic grade uh, essential oils, you can, and I do take them internally, and I encourage my clients. We have a lot of classes and education on that, so it can be done safely. So that's one of the big things you really want to pay attention to is what can be taken internally and what cannot. And then also keep in mind, even if you're applying it topically, these are found in your bloodstream for four to six hours after, topic, uh, after application. 
So your skin is your biggest organ. It's a big deal. So can are these mostly, or are they a difference between some the internal ingestion versus, or are these all both? Topically um, and ingestion. Most all of them can be used topically. Some of them are photosensitive, so you have to be careful so that, like, you don't want to put bergamot on your skin and then go outside because you're going to get a rash because it's a photosensitive. A lot of the citrus ones are photosensitive and will cause rashes like that if you go out and have sun exposure. But it's just a matter of, you know, you got to take control of your wellness again, like I said in the very beginning. Mm -hmm. Learn more about what's going on with you and talk to people like me who want to help people. And then for the other healers out there, please, let me help you get to where we're at. I put all my books on the first class. Um, this is just the doTERRA product information page book. And every every oil in here that is in this book, this page is on the website. So it's at your fingertips. You don't have to buy the book. And information, educate yourself. Mm -hmm. you know, now this is the thing out. that I didn't get to show you this yet, but I'm going to bring it up again. Um, the doTERRA Essential Oil Chemistry Handbook is on that website. I linked it in my first class. And Michael, this is going to blow your mind. <laughs> well, this Here, is nice. they talk about all the different terpene profiles and the carbon backbone and the functional groups and show you how much is in each. So like Clary Sage has 40 to 75% linalool acetate and 8 to 40% linalool. Now when you get back here, it comes and shows you even more things and tells you about how what terpene does what and helps. So you look at, this is the chemical classification, it's a sesquiterpene on lindestrine, which internally cleansing and it's found in myrrh. So that would explain why myrrh is great for cancer fighting and I, I do put myrrh in my cancer mm -hmm. fighter formula because you want that internal cleansing to get rid of the bad metabolites and everything that's in there, to get rid of that stuff. And then linalool, it tells you everything that linalool is in, so you can cross-reference well, nice. your terpenes. And look and figure out exactly what they're for. Uh-huh. Is it's that not wonderful. amazing? That is, that's really nice. This is one of the greatest people working on healing and wanting to find a way. If you find things don't work for you, this that, that's your cross-reference right there. Yeah, and you know maybe in, start using these natural remedies as first options. Well, and that's you know, what I encourage that's, people that's really to do what should happen. is to start here, and then we move to CBD, and then we go to THC if they're oh. eligible in the state that they're in. Because the problem that we have is, for some people, a lot of people, when they're really sick, they're at the end of their rope financially. And so that's why I don't say, hey, you got to join doTERRA and buy all these oils. No. Let me make something for you, and if it works, we'll get there. But a lot of people, you're at the end of your rope financially, and I'm not here to kill you. I want to help you. And so that's where I'm at, and that's why I work with my oils, and I want to share and educate, because we need to help people, and we need to help each other. So. Yeah, take away some of that stress and anxiety, right? Well, yeah, and For also, sure. being sick is hard. A it lot is. of people don't realize how hard it is, and a lot of people, by the time they get to me, they're like just exhausted and, and they don't know what to do with themselves. And even sometimes just a friendly voice on the other side of the phone helps. And it's, you know, sick in many different ways. Not only is there, and I noticed with my mom, you know, not only is it her physical health, but it's the mental health. And, oh, big time. And not, you know, mm -hmm. the mental health for her, she was honestly at that point in time ready to go, but it was the mental strain with her knowing that she couldn't do things for herself, that she mm -hmm. was relying on her kids and family. And that was a lot, you know, what Bridget said in her case as well in, mm -hmm. in Martin County. She just wanted to be useful to her family and her loved ones. Right. Um, and I actually call that emotional health. Yeah. Because that's where their self-worth really gets beat up. And that's where my psychology training is very helpful. Because, you know, I never wanted to be a shrink. I always studied the brain. But because of my studying of the brain, I understand what's going on in there when people are depressed or they have this going on or they're sick. And that's why receptor science just explodes in my brain when I, when I talk about it and learn about it is because I studied the brain so in-depth and I did, the brain is fascinating. Yeah, people so. don't understand the impact of it, you know, especially, mm -hmm. you know, pain and chronic pain, one of the leading causes of suicide and, you know, mm -hmm. with depression and stuff in this country. And, you know, this, these oils and, and taking back our health because I think that um, a lot of the pharmaceutical meds that they have now are doing nothing but deteriorating 
you know, your brain even further, mm -hmm. putting you in a fog, and therefore you're depressed because you can't get up and do things. And, you know, that mental cycle continues on until you can break free, right. I think, from pharmaceuticals. And, and fortunately, I'm not going to say unfortunately, fortunately, I continue to hear it over and over again from patients and, and from doctors as well with, mm -hmm. you know, cannabis being introduced into Florida now as a medicine. Um, it just it's blowing people away uh -huh. that it's actually working the doctor's uh -huh. like wow i never believed it's really in this. working you know, work. my clients aren't crazy <laughs> <laughs> you know people actually have a say oh people who use a medication off you know label or doing it in the black market who say it makes them feel better are actually telling the truth like, right so it's um well and then also i think it's very goes. empowering for people when they get to take control of their own health and that's really my goal. It's like one gal that I was helping already. She's already into doTERRA. And I, I said, well, don't go spending the money because that one, one's really expensive. So let me make you something. She tried it and she's already like, oh, wow. And with the drops that are in this little bottle right here, 80 drops in a bottle for the cost. It's cheaper for her to go buy it herself now. But at least she knows it works before she went and spent that money. And that's important to me. So, you know, I just break it down, charge by the drop, add a little on, and, you know, and I'm not killing anybody. Yeah. So. Well, that's good. Yep. Yeah. Definitely well, don't then, have a medical degree then, huh? <laughs> no, I don't, but I should, people say. I'm just saying, because they kill people, no. <laughs> no. They try to help, and it's not their fault that they've been um, brainwashed through education, probably controlled by the pharmaceutical companies, just like with cannabis that people have been brainwashed through education by our government and by propaganda. Uh -huh. You know, and you said reefer madness early, and it's funny because they were playing at SSDP over in Tampa, having a showing of reefer madness um, on, God, on Thursday. I not anymore. Yeah, on Thursday. And then they actually, I think they're going to be doing a play over in Sarasota of reefer madness this year. Uh -huh. So it's the year to, to get rid of the reefer madness, look at it as it is, a bunch of bullshit. And legalize it here in Florida, you know, and take well, our Well, and realize and that back. people were brainwashed. Yeah. You know, that's the thing. The other thing people don't realize is um, the Drug Free America campaign. That actually, sure, we got Drug Free America, but what a lot of people don't realize is that's the largest advertising campaign in this nation. And if you follow the money, you'd be blown away by the billions of dollars spent ever since their inception and who's fed into that. And it's all an advertising campaign, mainly against cannabis. Yeah, and I mean, a lot of it dealt with, they gave, you know, companies and TV shows when I was growing up in the 80s, you know, in early 90s, tax deductions and tax breaks for putting anti-drug, you mm -hmm. know, propaganda in their movies. and The day of the crack know. and the egg and the skillet. <laughs> <laughs> I love the anti-video she's done now. I don't know if you saw that. Oh, but, yeah, I did, because it reversed yeah. it. Now this is your egg on lack of knowledge or something like that. Right? Oh, yeah. <laughs> It is. It's knowledge is power, and we have social media, thankfully, the thing that we were saying, cursing caused anxiety earlier, mm -hmm. um, to give us the ability to spread education, you know, through programs like this and shows like this, and, you know, when you go to speaking at events and things that we do, you know, this gives people hope um, that there's alternatives for them, mm -hmm. and, you know, I think that, that video, the cancer video, um, and that story about that woman and the fact that she's three years now since she's been cancer free she has got no problems no you know it's not coming back and i mean it's just miraculous and, and not listening to an american doctor and going to germany uh -huh. and taking an all-natural treatment and changing her diet that's it fantastic so thank you so much thanks for, for coming come michael on. i really love oh, it it's my pleasure yeah i'm glad you came yeah are you gonna hang out till the show's over or are you gonna I, keep yeah, motoring on with your I'm adventures go out there and do the call okay we'll see okay i'll wrap it up at 8 30. bye everyone have fun Alrighty. so i have a little tale to tell you of cannabis hypermeresis syndrome let me get a drink of water and it's quite the tale to tell Stuff out of there first. I used it to bring stuff up. <laughs> so, <laughs> anywho's, um, I had a case of cannabis hypermeresis syndrome right here in South Florida in my lap. What time do we have? 
Okay, great, 7.15. So we got about an hour and 15 minutes to go over this. And I hope we have some more feedback on this. So let me read a couple of the comments here. Oh yeah, Tosh made a great comment on here. Yeah. Love you, sweetie, see you later. Um, have to be your own advocate these days. They throw you on meds to get you out of their hair. And boy, if that isn't a true statement. Um, they are over-medicating America. Um, before I take off on the cannabis hypermeresis really quick, I just had to make a tincture for a little gal um, getting off of opioids. And she was all freaked out because she's been through it before. And so she knows what to expect. And just talking to her made her feel better. Because people need to have somebody to talk to that they, they can understand their fear and why they have that fear. And I said, I totally get your fear and we're going to get you off of them. And I explained to her about opioid hyperalgesia and what that was and why she was in the position she was in. And she's actually on a very, very low dose. Um, I think it was 15 milligrams four times a day. And I've seen people on much higher than that. It's mind-boggling what some people are put on. So um, just in talking to her and educating her and giving her resources to go and read and being the calm voice on the other end of the phone, that helped set her mind to know that she can do this and that she's not alone and that somebody will be there to counsel her and coach her through it. That's very important to people. And then also com keeping her comfortable through it. And so that's where the CBD comes in to help with that. So it'll help her to bridge the gap to get off of it because now what's happening to a lot of these opioid users, especially in South Florida, they're being treated like drug seekers when they go to any kind of, uh, like the pharmacy won't refill her prescription. She's had it marked and labeled in her file. And now they wanna send her to a pain management clinic. And I'm like, oh boy, we're gonna stay away from that because with the low doses she's on anyway, I said, no, we don't need to go and get higher doses. You're going to wind up a junkie with a needle in your arm because what happens is they get you trapped into the higher doses and then they threaten you or take it away somehow and then that's how people wind up going to the streets to buy heroin with fentanyl in it and die. So let's just get those opioids completely out of your mouth. And so I put together a beautiful tincture for her. We're going to get started on that. Hopefully I'll have some results for you next week. Now, from that point, I'm going to carry on. I'm late starting on my cannabis hypermeresis talk, so let me tell you a story. I am not going to use a client's name, but this is a person right here in South Florida, very close to me, have grown to love and adore this person very much, and it's all through this battle and learning about this condition. When I first met this person, um, uh, female, uh, uh, mid-50s, had been diagnosed with cyclical vomiting syndrome 26 years, 27 years ago. Uh, and when I had heard about cyclical vomiting syndrome, I immediately went and started researching and reading and actually found like one of the only loan support groups that's out there. Probably, I think it's in Michigan or Minnesota, really tiny group. But um, I found everything that I could read on it because cyclical vomiting syndrome, I'd never heard about it. And I wanted to know because with how affected this person was, when I met them, they very rarely went out in public. They always did not leave house without a barf bag in their purse, ever. Barely went shopping on their own, was basically an absent parent. And it was all because of the cyclical vomiting syndrome. And so as I learned and read about cyclical vomiting syndrome, I found out that it affects only about 2% of the population. So it's a very rare condition. And then of that 2% of the population, 50% of those people were cannabis users. And then of those 50%, of those 50%, half of those, so 25% of the entire cyclical vomiting diagnosed people in the, in the nation, 25% of that little small group were doing what I called burners. They're, they were burning, and that's a term I, turned, I determined after I learned more about it. And what happens with these people is they wind up taking very hot showers and scalding themselves. And it's because the pain in their belly is so horrible. It's like a giant porcupine in there with all spines up, and every one of them is plugged into an electric shock machine. Now, anybody who knows anything about the enteric nervous system that runs from your brain all the way to your butt, 
thousands of nerves in there. When your belly is something wrong and you have that kind of horror, it takes complete control of your body. And so not only were they vomiting, but diarrhea, extreme diarrhea out the other side. So even going out in public was very, just a huge challenge, okay? I, I mean, my heart broke for this person when I first met them and I went, I'm gonna fix you, I have to fix you, I have to. And so one of the first things we did is we were um, utilizing hash capsules, the big double out ones, like six or eight of them four times a day, throwing them through her, didn't touch her. She was basically pooping cannabis and it didn't touch her, the capsules, no effect. Didn't feel it in her body, it just went straight through. One thing that happened though is before, before we tried that, they were only in the hospital monthly. When we went to those with a higher concentration, it wound up bi-monthly. So every two weeks they wound up in the hospital. Now what happened with this, this person could not take any kind of a pill medication. The gut was all messed up, pills weren't absorbed. They'd go and give them a prescription for Dilaudid, they would never refill it. They didn't want to be, they didn't want to worry about theft or being robbed because that's one of the biggest things people will, they'll kill you for your prescriptions down here. It, it, it's just stupid. So never took home a prescription because it didn't work. The only thing that worked was IV liquid Dilaudid, port in the chest to put that in, okay? That's how serious this was. And so as I got to know this person more, I found out more about the history. <coughs> This is a person who never drinks, just don't like alcohol, not their thing. So alcohol was messing up the belly. Started using cannabis at the age of about 14. And then that was the thing. That was what they liked. That was what they loved. That love the plant, love the scent. To this day, we'll ask to just smell flower. If anybody has something, can I please smell it? Oh my God, I love it, they say. Even though they can't use it right now. So that was the drug of choice. And then also over 26 years of going in and out of the hospital every month, even the doctors were telling him, use a little cannabis, it's supposed to be good for nausea, okay? So fast forward back to where I left off about after the hash caps and the hash caps just going straight through. So then we introduced concentrates. Oh, she loved concentrates. That was just fantastic, loved them right up her alley. And this is a person who, if you sat and smoked with them, they'd smoke an entire joint all by themselves. That was their dose. High doses, high, high, high doses of cannabis over a long period of time. And so by the time we got to the concentrates, then we're in the hospital weekly, weekly, weekly in going in and being treated like a drug seeker. That I went to the hospital with this person because I'm like, whoa, we gotta get control of this. She needs an advocate there because when they're in that type of pain, they can't even think. And I mean, I'm at her house watching her burn herself in her shower and begging her to come out of the pool so I can take her to the hospital. That's how bad it was. Their, their water bill was $600 a month just from hot water, from all of this going on, okay? So, after the second hospital visit on that, I had been consulting with Dr. Sulak because uh, he had been down here on a conference about the same time that I was, and I was talking to him about this client, and he went, it's got to be cannabis hypermeresis syndrome, and I kept reading about that, and I went, you know what, I think you're right. And I went to her and I said, my friend, I actually grieved for her because I felt so bad because I love this plant so much, okay? It, it was horrible for me to even have to tell her and say, cannabis is not your friend. It's not your friend, and I don't know why, but I'm going to try and get some answers. And so at that point, I said, you know, you really got to think about stopping. Just, just stop. And she totally agreed after that last trip through the hospital because I'm telling you, it was so bad. I'm in the hospital with her, and I'm digging my knuckles into her back where she's telling me to, to do misdirecting pain. 
So if somebody is in extreme excruciating pain like that, you can do some of that stuff. Some of the other things that you do is you take a long nail and shove it into their toes, into the big toe, right in the middle of that sucker and squeeze up their foot. But you got to do some of that misdirecting of the pain for them if you're with somebody. And I'm telling you, if you have somebody who's in that type of excruciating pain, you've got to be super patient and very forgiving. They know not what they do. I swear to God. This woman was always ever so much the saint, but I've been with other people who they'll rip your face off and it's just because they're, they're in so much horrible pain. They don't know how to react. Well, after 26, 27 years, this woman going through this, she, I, what a trooper, just, I, I was so amazed by how, what a tough badass she was to be able to go through and, and go through that. And so we're going to fast forward again. We made it through the quitting. She quit immediately, okay? And she didn't smoke or use any cannabis for at least four months. And I had been in touch with Dr. Sulak, and he says, you know, you got to try some microdosing and test it. And I said, I ain't testing nothing on this person until they're ready. Because right now, they're getting their life back, and I'm not going to take their life away from them until they're ready to test it and try it. And so about four months later, come to me one day and says, oh my God, can we please, I'm ready to microdose. I'm about, to be... you know, her stress level was up to here. And I haven't even dared to try any CBD. We're just getting ready to talk about that right now. But, um, so I let her, let her microdose that day and she took the first hit. She took the second hit. She took the third one. She's like, right on. Oh, one more. Well, that one more within two minutes. The raccoon mask came back. When this person got sick, they got dark circles over their eyes. I mean, immediately raccoon mask, boom, turned green, ran for my bathroom, and was vomiting immediately, and like on the verge of the trots, again, explosive bowel function, okay, from four hits. It was that immediate. And I'm immediately, while this is going on, I'm texting Dr. Sulak going, oh my God, oh my God, oh my God, can you believe this? And I'm giving him the timelines and all of this going on. And then they come out and she is, I went and got my black pepper. Cause I'm like, okay, we gotta stop this. So I got the black pepper. She couldn't put it in her mouth, but she got a little bit in there. And then I had her smell in the, the shaker cause I didn't have my oil at that time. And, um, we got that stopped and got the vomiting stopped. And then she come out and higher than she's been in years. She was so high. She had to lay down on my couch for like two hours snoring balls. I mean, just out. It kicked her butt that hard. She'd been off for four months. And then after that, we got her straightened up and got her to where she could go back home and, and, and take care of things again. But, you know, I had to change her clothes and all of that because it just, it was very explosive at both ends. It was shocking and stunning to me. And even Dr. Sulak on the other end of my text was just floored with how immediate her reaction was. It was frightening. It was very frightening. And so after that, didn't touch it again for another three or four months. Well, and then she started microdosing on her own again because um, she figured that she could, she could kind of feel her symptoms coming back on. And so then she figured she'd stop. And then from there, she could get it out of her system, drink a bunch of water and flush because we talked about, you know, flush, drink a bunch of water, get all that out of your system. Because I really think what the cannabis hyperemesis syndrome is, is it's a talk, it's, it's not toxic because it's not going to kill you but it's like an allergy almost. And the response isn't a rash and hives and itchy, scratchy and this, it's, it just totally upsets the enteric nervous system. The whole enteric nervous system just freaks out. And so this woman 27 years later has explosive out both sides from long time usage of cannabis. We stop it, she got her life back. And in those few months that she got her life back, I mean, she can go out, she goes to all the school events, she's out hanging with her kids, going to dinner with her husband, she can go shopping. I took her on her first road trip out of town. We were gone all day long. She hadn't done that in, in years because she was scared to go too far from home. So giving somebody their life back it was just phenomenal and that's why I will, I will always fight for her. But also it was a huge, huge educational thing for me. 
and and that going through all of that with her i mean i grieved having to tell her oh my god you gotta quit smoking pot i was like i can't believe i'm telling you this but you have to stop and so in today's world my dear friend and through all of this she has become one of my dearest friends and i just love her to death and she's just i'm so happy she's gotten her life back she's hanging out with her kids going out with her husband going shopping driving all over the place she can go on a road trip she's planning on going to her high school reunion in kentucky which she never would have dreamt of last year because she would have been scared to get on a plane that's how debilitating that that was for her she was like an absent parent from her children's lives because she was always in the hospital or in her bed or sick or in the pool or in the shower scalding herself. So right now um, we are working on essential oil therapy. She does a lot of essential oil and terpene therapy with the essential oil. She's actually who got me into, into my whole little doTERRA and that thing. Yeah, she's who got me into it. And then um, hopefully we'll be experimenting with some CBD. We don't know right now yet. Um, I don't even want her to try anything until our kids graduate just because I don't want anything to impede this happy time of our lives. We're not going to affect that. But I really do want to try that with her in the future and see if she can take CBD and if that's going to affect her. But I'll tell you, the THC, it, it was stunning to me. And to see the rapid effect that it had when she microdosed as to how it came on so fast even Dr. Sulak was just stunned and then to be able to get it stopped with the black pepper was a big deal and then today now where she's at I'm just I couldn't be happier but the thing that concerns me is I'm, I'm really concerned about a genetic thing and it happening in the family. And I'm, I think I'm starting to see some of that stuff with their own, with their, her daughter. So I, I don't know. It could be the same thing, but I see the same raccoon thing. And she's kind of doing a little bit of the hot shower and stuff. So I don't know what to say about what's going on with people out there. Um, I would have considered her usage normal along the lines of the same way that I have consumed since I've been about that age and with everything I've been through with her I really just think it's an allergy you know people are allergic to all sorts of different things and the fact that this one doesn't kill you or cause all of the anaphylactic shock or anything like that that's a good thing because we don't ever want to see cannabis ever ever kill anybody but I definitely think it's tied to the enteric nervous system and with that enteric nervous system and the brain belly connection, that's really what I was jumping on when I tried to first work with the capsules and try to work on her belly and enteric capsules and skip the gut and all the acids, stomach acids. I learned so much from trying to help her with different ways to treat and help. But um, I really have just, after all of that time, I'm pretty convinced it's an allergy. So. And then I have a question. Did she start using essential oils to help since she can't use pot? And yeah, I think I covered that already, but um, most certainly um, that's the same person that got me into essential oils and like we just had to work on a smashed finger. So that's helping to, um, yeah, she can definitely use the essential oils and the terpenes. Because keep in mind, and I will say it over and over and over and over and over and over and over again, terpenes, and essential oils are truly one and the same. It's proven over and over again. Every oil you look up in this book or on the doTERRA website, everything you look up, you scroll to the bottom, there's a product information page at the bottom. That's everything in this book. You look at the main chemical component, tell you right there. And even better, go get this handbook. Bookmark it. It's free. Free. This knowledge right here to me is invaluable, invaluable. So it was worth it to me so much that I printed it out and I carry it with me everywhere that I go when I want to look up what's going on with a person in a condition. And so, you know, when you, the, one of the best things to do when you first ever get this book is to go through here on this section of it. When you download the PDF and you get to this part with all the chemical components, Make note 
of the benefits section because that's where you're going to cross-reference and find what terpene works for what. I see the question, can you build up a tolerance to EOs, which are essential oils, and terpenes? And I would say, I can't answer that honestly, that's a great question. Um, could you Google that for me? And see, just type it in exactly the way that it was typed up, typed in there. Can you build up a tolerance to essential oils and terpenes? And so, um, I can't answer that honestly. I know you can develop a tolerance to cannabinoids, and people do develop tolerances to cannabis. Um, I don't know so much about CBD, so that's another thing to look into, because I haven't had that question about CBD. But... Um, that's also one thing that I really try to do to avoid tolerance issues is microdose, 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 microdose. And then if you find that you get to a level that works for you and it quits working, before you go and start ramping up your level a lot, and I'm talking a long period of user, not, you know, when you're first starting to figure it out, it's different. But when you've been on it for a year and you're finding you're not having an effect, one of the best things I tell people to do with THC, for one, get rid of black pepper. If you're eating a lot of black pepper, that's why you don't feel it, because you're blocking your CB1 receptor. And for two, do a receptor cleanse. And that's very simple. Six days, just go six days, no consumption whatsoever. You have fat cells in your body. Cannabis lives in your fat cells. All those cannabinoids are gonna hang out, okay? You're not gonna be, it's the emotional thing you gotta get past to do that six day receptor cleanse. You know, that's the biggest thing. And um, people with horrible chronic pain, we need to do some other support on the side. So like if you're taking straight THC with no CBD supplement, when you do your receptor cleanse, I would highly recommend that you do higher doses of CBD during that time or add CBD during that time so that that way you still have the comfort and you can be out of pain during that time until you can go back and use regularly, okay? So it's important that you pay attention to, it's all receptor science. And when you understand what's going on, and a lot of times what you see when you find a person developing a tolerance, they may have been doing too high a doses in the first place. And uh, another thing that we really have to pay attention to, and I see a lot of my good friends who are um, practicing in the pain management fields, they are actually testing people for the metabolic rate at which they ingest and their body absorbs opioids. And I really think and wish that we could do that with cannabis as well, because I think that would really answer a lot of the dosing questions. But truly, a lot of dosing is trial and error. Um, I have a regimen and a protocol I follow for cancer because it's proven over the years. But a lot of the other stuff, it's trial and error based on the individual person, what's going on. Adding these little bottles of loveliness um, help incredibly. The terpenes are the signalers. That's what tells us what to do. That's what tells us what you got to do in your body. You know, it, it gets in there and says, hey, cannabis, come over here. You got a problem over here. Go, 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 come on over here. You know, so that's how it all ties together. So how are we looking on time? 7.40. We got 20 minutes left. Please share this. Um, I really hope that even after... Uh, I close this video and put it out there that this will get shared out there to all sorts of people, especially with the cannabis hyperemesis syndrome. Um, I did go looking yesterday to see if there were any groups out there, and there weren't, so I think I'm going to go start one. So I'm going to search some more because I'd rather join one than try to monitor another one. And if anybody out there has a group that's out there, please message me, put it down here, somehow get it to me so that I can go and um, put this video in here and people can learn from my experience with my, with my pal here. And um, then I really hope, you know, be very forgiving to the people who are going through that condition. It's real, please. You know, so many people wanna say, oh, it's the pesticides or it's this or it's that. Until we have lab testing, we don't know. And you can't tell me this one person over 27 years time, such a variety over so many years, they can't say everything that they got had pesticide in them to make them sick and, and sick for 26, 27 years. I, I just, I can't swallow that. And until we have lab testing, we don't know. 
we need to know what people's tolerances are and their blood levels. We need to be able to test people's blood, see how much the metabolites are in there. Oh my gosh, with how sensitive this person is, if we get a doctor behind studying her, I know she'd be all game for that to study and see why this happens. You know, test the blood levels. When she starts to feel her condition coming on, well, we'd have to have the rescue measure for her. But check the blood levels right when that's coming up. What's happening in there? What's going on with the blood levels, the chemicals, the hormones? Is there an anamide in, in there? What What's going on chemically? And so if we could really look at some of the things that we need to find out with this syndrome, we're going to get more answers. And I really think a huge part of what happens with this is the enteric nervous system. And a lot of people, we don't know, you know, they don't know about the endocannabinoid system. We don't understand neurology. You, then you throw in the enteric nervous system. Well, any gastroenterologist is going to be sitting out there going, well, duh. But everybody, we need to know about all these different systems. It's our body and it's everything within us. And so one of the most important things is your brain and your belly. If your brain and your belly ain't happy, nothing else is going to work or function right. So one other tip that I tell all of my people, every single one of them, especially if you have anxiety, IBS, or any of those conditions, kombucha, kombucha, kombucha. You need to get on some kombucha, get that good life fermented probiotic in there. I've heard about people taking all the capsules and all of this, but really... I just find, and my people that I talk to and counsel with this have great success with the live fermented probiotic. So add that in. And to people who are suffering from cannabis hyperemesis syndrome, I challenge you, stop. Stop smoking, stop using, flush your system, not six days, stop for at least a month. And I know, I know how emotionally painful it is. It hurt me to tell my friend Cannabis was not her friend, okay? It was very painful for me. I couldn't believe it. I'm sitting here looking at myself going, why are you upset? I'm like, because I love this plant. I can't believe anybody can't use it. But you know what? It's true. There are people who cannot use this plant. And I'm hoping over time and, and abstinence, maybe we can find a way that people with this condition will be able to come back to the magic and be able to utilize it because my biggest fear is this person's already a cancer survivor what's going to happen if she heaven forbid ever got cancer again oh my god I, I couldn't imagine throwing down the levels I'd want to be throwing down her to fight her cancer and keep her around as long as I could and just locking her up in a hospital on an IV Dilaudid drip so that's a big part of the problem. So, I it says here, oh, I have an answer to the tolerance question about essential oils. Thank you for writing down the answer, tech support. I love it. Mm -hmm. The extent of bacteria in acquiring resistance to essential oil components has yet to be systematically and extensively investigated. So, that's what she found through skimming through. We need to research more, but that right there, too... We need more science. People got out of studying phytotherapy. Um, as Michael was saying in his compendium that he had long ago, before we even had all the big pharma meds that we had today. No GMOs, eating clean, clean living, you know, that type of stuff. Stay away from the processed foods. Um, a good diet, phytotherapy, use your plants as your medicine. And when we got away from that is where we wind up having so many problems. Now, one thing I do want to reiterate and stress again, I am a big believer in integrative therapy. I will not turn my back on my doctors. There's too many people who rely on them. There are people out there who are completely holistic, and to them I say, huzzah, fantastic. I will send people who want to be completely holistic your way because you're going to be a better counselor or coach for them. I'm the person that's in the middle ground and the people who are scared of going completely holistic all the way. I'm not scared of it myself. I just I have more of my logical, rational reasons for doing it in my brain. And then also I really, I think our doctors have a lot to bring to us. I just think that our healthcare system has gotten things out of hand and we're treating more symptoms than conditions. And we really need to look at the person as a whole. And when a person goes into a doctor's office, they need to be asking them about everything they're taking, not just, not just big pharma meds. 
They need to be asking them about their holistic treatments. They need to be asking them about their over-the-counter meds. They need to care about if they're having a bowel movement or not, or if their gut's all messed up, or if they're suffering anxiety. And what's what I'm seeing that's happened just in healthcare alone, like I said before in a previous class, I had my same doctor for 28 years. He handled everything. He was my gyno. He did this. He did that. When I had a big surgery where I had a urethral cyst, he was involved and part of that team because I valued him and his opinion, and he wanted to be involved at that point. He was a fam family doctor, general practitioner. We don't have that anymore. When I go to the doctor now, if I need to go for anything gynecological, I have to have a referral. And you better have a referral for this and a referral for that. And heaven forbid if you go to one person who has all of your knowledge. And I miss that. I miss my doctor having all of my information, knowing everything there was to know, what I've had done, what I didn't have done. I could have honest conversations with him. He delivered all of my kids. So... That doesn't happen in today's society. And when I go out and speak publicly and I ask that question, how many people here, here have had the same doctor for 30 years? You don't see any hands. How many have had the same doctor for 25? I'll raise my hand. Maybe one other person. How many have had the same doctor for 20 years? A couple more hands, but very, very rarely. And so then I say, how many people have had the same doctor for a year? And that's when you see 90% of the class hands go up or wherever I'm speaking at that event and it's just stunning to me we don't have relationships with our doctors and our physicians and that's why I do what I do as well is to help close that gap and encourage people you know don't walk into your doctor's office without a list you write down everything everything you're paying them for their services you're the boss not them and you write down all of the questions that you need answered you do not let them leave that room until you have them all checked off and if you have another question you sit and you write that one down and you check that one off too because you need to know as much as you can know about how to take care of yourself and that's the person that has the key and if they're not going to share it with you we got to find out somehow and so that's one of the biggest tools I help people do too is communicate with their doctors it's very important to have that open communication and so many people don't they're afraid of them which it's surprising to me how many people are scared of a doctor. Uh, and I've seen it in people very close to me, very close to me, who were terrified their doctor might find out this or their doctor might find out that. or And it doesn't even have anything to do with their health. could just be their marital relationship. So, I mean, it's a doctor. They don't care who you're sleeping with, you know. Well, they might if you're being frequent and getting sick. But um, you know what I mean. So that, just start taking control of your health care, folks. It's really important that you do. And um, I really hope to see some good feedback and comments in this uh, down below. And when I get it out there on YouTube, I'll have to watch that one too. But I do have this stuff on my YouTube channel. Go look at My Medicine Consulting on YouTube. And I keep my Terpene Healer videos there. Um, Terpene Healer is where I will always launch this class from. Uh, because I'm firmly, terpenehealer.com is my website, and that'll take you to my blog. Please definitely go there and read up on the Terpene Healer website. Read up about, and my welcome, there's a beautiful story there about in Colorado Springs and how terpenes may affect cloud seeding and the formation of clouds. And it's just amazing to me how terpenes are everywhere around us and all the fascinating and amazing things that they can do for us. And that's why people, you know, when you go, like down here, you go to a botanical garden, people walk out of there all happy and high. Well, they've been in there smelling all the flowers and getting all the linalool and limonene and whatever little happy terpenes are in there. Um, I got to see my first Lang Lang tree here in Florida the other day. It was like, I smelled it before I saw it. Then I looked up and went, oh, it is Lang Lang. And it was amazing. Well, that person, I don't know that they'll ever sell their house because of that tree, because they just love it and they understand the happiness component in there. And if you look at Lang Lang and go read up on it, that, that one, I put that in all of my cancer stuff just to try to help elevate people and keep them happy. Because, like I said earlier when Michael was here, being sick is hard. And being a caretaker for somebody who's sick is really hard because somebody you love is just very, very sick and, and 
it really wears on you and you don't want to go out and take care of yourself. You feel guilty if you do, but you need to. And I encourage every caretaker who watches this, please, no matter how hard it is, you're not going to be worth a shit to the person you're taking care of if you don't take care of yourself. Please take those mental health moments. And that's what I call them. you got to take a mental health break. If somebody comes in, somebody says, can I help you with something? Say, yeah, can you sit with him for two hours so I can go to the gym? And do it. And go burn off your energy or do what you need to do. But run some errands. Go shopping. Whatever incites your happiness endorphins and gets those going. Because you need happiness too. That makes you a better caregiver. That's going to make things... It, it, it helps you to... Step out of the zone for a while. You've got to just step out of the zone and then come back to it. But have those times to take a breath. You deserve them. Okay? So how much time we got there, timekeeper? We're still down to 10 minutes. Do we have any more comments, questions? I'm kind of expecting we'll have a lot more comments after this gets posted. <laughs> <laughs> Haven't had a lot of viewers tonight, so hey Tasha, I think you're the lucky winner of a rollerball tonight. Call me later. <laughs> Any more questions? Oh, one other thing. I do want to encourage people to look up the difference and um I'll get I'll go back through this video and I'll post some stuff about the difference between cyclical vomiting syndrome and cannabis hypermeresis syndrome. There is a difference, and it's amazing, and pray for the people that have it, because I'm telling you, it's not a good thing. And uh, I was really surprised to see how many more people down here, um, there's quite a population in South Florida that's actually been diagnosed with cyclical vomiting syndrome. So it'll be interesting to see as we learn more about cannabis hypermeresis syndrome, how many of those people that have been diagnosed with cyclical vomiting syndrome actually have cannabis hypermeresis syndrome? Have to figure that out. But, anywho, I have a farewell party to go to for a young lady who's taken off on a new adventure in her life. So I am going to take off and go do that. We're cutting her out a couple minutes early, but I think that's okay. Two hours is a long time to go. My huge thank you to Michael Minardi for coming to our show tonight. I just love Michael. He's really good, and uh, what he does for patients and people is phenomenal. And having him as our chairperson for Regulate Florida, couldn't have a better person. So pleased we have him for the job. He's the right man. So thanks so much for watching. Please share this video. Get it out to those people. And if anybody finds a cannabis hypermeresis group out there, throw it in the comments on this video, please, so I can go and get in there. And if I don't find one in the next couple of days, I'm going to go start one. Because we have got to get people herded in here and help them. They, they need help. So, thank you very much. Have a good night. Stay tuned with Terpene Healer. Like the page. And be sure to set up for notifications. And um, as soon as we start selling some seats in these classes... I'll be moving the live videos to another night. So, thanks. Take care. Good night.